uh, hello, uh, welcome, Thomas. It's it's wonderful to have you on uh, Collab Cloud. Uh, this session, this talk series is called Beyond Borders. Uh, it's about uh, uh, architects and designers uh, who have uh, gone beyond the borders, beyond the norms of being in a box and done something exceptional. Uh, your journey uh, has been very inspiring, but uh, I would like to ask you that what inspired you to choose the field of architecture and tell us something about your minimalistic design style. Okay, first of all, thank you. Thank you, Ritika, very much. And thank you, Priya, very much for inviting me to this fantastic initiative. I think you're doing just a great job together. And yeah, the, the whole initiative is massive and it's a really good job. So keep on going like this because you're just so strong and we need something like this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so to ask, you, to ask you your question, what inspires me? Uh, in what inspired me to, to, to make architecture. My passion for architecture is really, really far back in time. I started prowling from an early age on the building site, I have to say. I think it was about, I was about eight years old when my grandfather took me to see how things were built and how reality took shape, okay? And I was shocked, I have to say, I was really uh, fascinated. I was shocked by complexity. I was fascinated by... Uh, ingenuity I was troubled by the extreme toil of things everything was really really hard to do okay so that that was really fascinating to me and so probably in those years I developed a natural um, inclination towards the possibility of physical effects in the world in a way so to have a role in what we can what we could we could say the spectacle the spectacle of life huh? so because in fact at the end of the day uh, at the end of the day architecture is the stage of our biographies it is the book on which we we write our stories, our aspirations, our dreams, our hopes, in a way, our most intimate needs and 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 uh, and dreams, in a way. So probably in those very years, I sharpened one of my decisive weapons. Uh, I'm, I'm used to say an infinite and insatiable curiosity. Yes, because whether you like it or not, architecture makes you feel perpetually ignorant, inadequate, perpetually not ready. So the blank sheet every single time to revise you as if it were the first time. And curiosity, the thirst to know, I would say, is, is the only antidote to the vertigo of emptiness, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm, I'm used to say these words about this. And so over time, I travel, uh, I read, I studied, I saw, I savored, I visited places, I knew people and things, different spaces and different feelings about staying in a place, okay? And, and that was really, really important to me. I patiently worked out a fragile balance, and that is really important, a, a balance between design and landscape, between the form of architecture and the spirit of places, between the will for personal affirmation and collective needs in a way. I've always been fascinated by the possibility of accomplishing something by the bare minimum, yet with dignity, with pride and, and, and power in a way. And, and I've always cultivated an idea of architecture intentionally frugal, uh, richly poor, conscious, uh, sensitive in, in a way, not as efficient as effective in interpreting its relationship with the world and with, and with with the people, you know, you know very well. Cooking a tasty dish with many ingredients is quite simple. We could say, so to speak, uh, the chances of succeeding are very high. Okay, but preparing a memorable dish with very few components, on the contrary, is very difficult. You know, is really really difficult. Leverage is much easier than adding, and limiting is much more complicated than abounding, you know? And stripping off is a sort of critical act. In some way, I would say, dramatic. It exposes us, it makes us helpless, forces us to come to terms with the reality of the world, in a way, without any compromise, without filters, without superstructures. It forces us, we must say, to be uh, sincere, to sincerity. So it is, just the same thing for architecture, I think. Designing unforgettable spaces is a daunting task, of course. Even more complicated if you try to do it with the thrift and ingenuity of the multi-star chef, okay? I, I, I don't know if you agree or not with me. <laughs> and this yeah. is neither a personalistic wish or, nor a communicative artifice. Looking back on all of my 
uh, architectural experiences I have been through so far, the, the most extraordinary ones were related to the perception of a complex um, simplicity of a strict essentiality in a way. So the minimalism of my production just becomes from that. And that's incredible if you think of it. And I'm used to say meta becomes the language of spirit. This is one of the things I'm really, really affection to. Meta becomes the language of spirit. I like it very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's absolutely, I mean, uh, uh, you know, and it, all of that reflects in the work that uh, even your Instagram, uh, uh, the images that you have put up, everything reflects your personality and uh, is an extension of you. Uh, we, uh, so if I have to ask you this question, what does a day in the life of Thomas uh, look like today and before COVID? <laughs> this is quite interesting. Well, fortunately, I, I, I don't think that many changes have come into my everyday life because of COVID-19. This is really, really a fortune, I would say. I'm talking about my job and, and the daily work, work routine, so to speak, because obviously many more changes and even breaks in some cases have affected my personal life. On the contrary, I could not see my family. I could not meet my, my friends. I could not go out for a walk and so on. Okay, So I think you can easily understand that. So I still go to the office at 9 a.m. in the morning and still go out of the office at 9 p.m. in the evening. So no. nothing's really changed in my life. That's a kind of sacred daily constant reality, I would say. So, uh, and that is a fortune in a way. So for three months, and this is interesting, for three months, so February, March, and, and then May, all of the guys of my team, me included, have moved the uh, the whole office to their own, so independently, I would say. So for that period, we just got digital contacts and relations. And I must admit that uh, working smart from home was yeah. amazing at the beginning for the possibility to take it slow and, and saving the time usually dedicated to car and traffic jams and so on. But it soon became a kind of prison where I could not free my mind from doing something every single moment going straight up to 17 or 18 working hours per day. That was absolutely insane. <laughs> that was really <laughs> insane. So there was a kind of prison, a kind of golden cage, I would say. So, but the positive consequence of that was that we had the chance to experiment new ways of communicating, obviously. And that was quite new for us in a way. And, and we found that so effective that we, we, we are still having remote meetings with clients every single time. This can be a good idea, for example. And when the physical presence is not so crucial in the process of evaluation, for instance, okay? So yeah. we lived uh, a fantastic paradox. Having the most of the time in our hands every day, we learn to save time and be more effective, so to speak, on the contrary. So this, the time is precious, you know, and time is precious, the most precious thing we have in life, I could say. And that right. was really, really funny in a way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think uh, that's pretty much the situation with uh, most of us uh, currently. And uh, instead of a 12 hour uh, work schedule, we've all moved to 16, 17 hours of working from home because sometimes you're working that in the night. That was crazy. Believe me, that yeah. was absolutely crazy. Never again. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> That was really, really proving. Absolutely. Never again. <laughs> so that, that drives me to my next question that, uh, you know, today, if you had to mentor uh, an architecture student, how would you guide them? Hmm. So this is strictly connected with uh, the, my, my activity on teaching. And, you know, my relationship with teaching is visceral in some terms. I could, I could never help it. And ever since still being a student at the college, um, I accepted the task of evaluating and correcting within various courses at the university, of course, mm -hmm. the projects of my colleagues of a few years younger. And I must admit it was really, really embarrassing at the beginning, but at the same time, obviously galvanizing because a great deal of trust had been placed in my hands directly. And totally after graduation, um, I took on my first official teaching assignment. It was about... 2004 I think and since then I have never stopped teaching and over the years I've taught in lots of Italian university and lectured in various international institutes for example Domus Academy in Milan where I met 
my, my friend uh, Priyal. And um, my happy first lesson, you know, my happy first lesson for 16 years now always opens with these words, more or less, okay? Believe it or not, each of you has a great talent. Never let anyone tell you that you are worth nothing, that you cannot, that you will not succeed, that you will do, not have the, the necessary skills, because it's all bullshit. I don't know if I can use this word, but yeah, I can say can. It. it's all bullshit. Okay, those who didn't make it want you to think it's like that. Yeah. And you all have a talent, be sure of that. Real challenge is to recognize it, to identify it, to narrow it, to cultivate it, to grow it, to make it become the most precious and priceless of goods and assets, I would say. So the world needs your freshness, your energy, your skills, your dreams, and we all desperately need your purity and flair, okay? Because yeah. you are yeah. the only hope we have to a better world. So this more or less is the beginning of my first lesson for 16, for 16 years right now. Excuse yes, me. yes, absolutely. It inspires me as well. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, it's applicable for people who are uh, pressures as well, people who have just started out. So I think that was a great answer. Um, and also, it's, what is interesting is that you started your career with design competitions and you won them all. So you've already been a winner. Yeah. So can you tell us about this experience and especially your first project, which was, uh, you know, a, a symmetry in the la landscape? Yeah, yeah. I'm still sorry, but I'm I'm still just thinking about the 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 previous answer, and I was thinking okay. about uh, the matter of motivation in, in in modern and contemporary society because it's firstly a matter of motivation if you if you know what I mean of being supportive in a society where everyone is grown in the never ending lack of something. Okay, yeah. you're never beautiful too much. You're never skinny enough. You're never rich enough. You're never talented enough and so on. So because if you feel down, you feel weak. And if you feel, if you feel weak, you're, you maybe are going to buy more and spend more, if you know what I mean. So that's really, really crucial to me. And that is a sort of link to the next question. Because when I was young, I, I, at, a, at a certain point in my life, I decided that the time had come to make something on my own. It was about 2008. After several experiences in Italy and around the world, I decided to follow my dream and, and in, in founding a sort of multidisciplinary group that could devote itself to architecture and more generally to the design and, and creative disciplines. Okay, so it was about giving light to something truly innovative in the Italian academic and professional landscape, especially in relation to the desire I would say to um, refound the collective consideration of, of our profession in the direction of a sophisticated pop image, socially engaged and no longer far from the reality of people in a way. So I, I tried some, some design competition, as you mentioned before, public and private, uh, working on them at night and on the weekends. And, and since at the time I was still collaborating with various design firms in Italy, okay? So the first one I decided to, to enter was for, uh, was a national competition for um, a new cemetery lost in the landscape in, in, in Northern Italy. Wow, I thought it was just the one. I thought it was the perfect one to, to start because you know, I had read about Le Corbusier saying, that nobody can be an architect until having designed a cemetery. So you can understand that was my perfect competition, first competition. So I just wanted to prove to the world that I was, I was an architect and I, I, I was talented in a way and I, that I could do that for first, okay? <laughs> so I was bold and young at that, at, that, at that time. So I decided to make that, to enter that competition. I made, the, I made my project kind of, unconventional cemetery planned as a beautiful garden with flowers, perfume and lights and, and air. And I won, and I won. Yeah, that was the first prize of a long sequence. And for about two years, I lived uh, a life in, in a way ascetic, strongly focused and absolutely far from any distraction. I would say I was, it, it was a, a very deep passion for what I did to guide myself and so to make me feel never tired, to allow me to sleep 
in certain cases, no more than two hours per night. It was crazy. It was my burning will to achieve goals that nourish my, my tenacity. So I tried some design competitions, as I told you, and I won them all. And I won them all. And you know, the results often expected for, for a long time came all together at last within a few months. So in 2009, it was about the end of 2009, I found myself happily forced to uh, give birth to my, to my own studio. And the opportunity I was waiting for had finally come and, and, and I knew I had to catch it absolutely. So that was the time, that was the perfect moment to act. Basically, I do not want to talk about difficulties because I, I believe that I, there are no real impediments for those who really want with all of themselves to do what they really want and what they really love. And the rest is history, we could say, because the works of my studio have fortunately received countless national and international awards. Maybe <laughs> this, this is what I want to believe for their not properly conventional character uh, far from passing fashions and the fleeting amusements of some seasons, we could say, so which has always characterized them, I think. And we were thrilled, for example, when we were invited an exhibition uh, to an exhibition in, in MoMA, New York, or when Renzo Piano, um, rewarding us, whispered in my ear, please keep on going like this because we need people who are able to imagine a future with strong roots like you. And I was absolutely astonished and my, my, my art was breaking for that. Okay, so the awards for us are rapid moments of happiness, I, I would say, in which to trace the pleasure um, of sharing the awareness of, of recognition of hard work because we work really hard. And let me take this opportunity to give a big thank you to Alice, to Lucrezia and Daniele that are my gold collaborators, golden collaborators, my diamond collaborators without whom I could absolutely do anything in my life. So thank you very much, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and you know what, uh, talking about again, uh, awareness, your, uh, your Instagram uh, page uh, is very impressive and inspiring. So uh, what is social media to you? And especially in current time. Mm, mm, mm. Well, um, I think that uh, one of the secrets of my Instagram page could be patience. Patience, yes. It is something about the ability to know when and how to wait. And the need to use time as a kind of distance from things. I wait, and so I know my followers are called to do as well. Okay. They, they are called to do the same with me. And I always wait to have something really interesting to communicate, really something really special to publish in a way. Okay? And my interlocutors know that every time, at least this is what I like to know, this is what I like to think about, okay, that waiting will be worth it. And in some ways, let me be light on this, um, it is a sort of revolutionary profile because it is slow. Okay. It is patient and it is slow. It makes fun of speed and I would say turning it into something superfluous. And after all, we all know quality never goes along with, with, with quantity. It, it never happens. So I, I do not post frequently, for instance. Yes. My uh, contents are quite rare and when compared with most of contemporary profiles. And I often reflect for days <laughs> on the next image to be published, for example, as if it were a kind of for life or um, irreversible choice. <laughs> you know, this happens when you realize you're an inspiration to someone else. Okay, this is, this is quite important. At that point, in fact, your choices um, carry with them a content of responsibility, a, a burden of respect, so to speak, and and I have to say, it is beautiful. It is beautiful to realize. And the moment you realize you are being an inspiration to someone else is as wonderful as it is shocking, because every choice from that point assumes its own intimate mm, thickness, uh, a weight that you did not have before, and it becomes adult in certain way, okay? I like to think of, of contemporary media as a sort of space where growing dreams, feeding the desires, um, mixing knowledge, comparing ideas, opening new paths of discovery and, 
and, and collaboration, first of all, I think. So I'm firstly seduced by the, the prospect of trying to do things in, a, in an alternative way, not exactly conventional, as I said before, even if only by a pinch. Okay, after all, only those who've said the, the I would say only those who've said the, the, the sailing uh, can hope to find a new world while those who remain on the ground are condemned to leave uh, what other, others have decided for them. Don't you think of it? Right. Yeah. Do you think I'm right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And as you rightly said, uh, when you know that uh, you know, you're inspiring someone, it becomes a responsibility. So uh, uh, you, uh, whatever you post is uh, affecting somebody else. Uh, and that is a huge responsibility. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And when I see your page, uh, it reminds me of a, a personality that is, uh, uh, you know, calm and uh, minimal in their thought process. So it, in a way, also represents you and your thought process. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, definitely. You're, you're right. Th thank you. <laughs> you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, then uh, coming to, uh, like, you know, the current situation and my last question, this year, 2020 has uh, put us all into thinking outside the box, you know, with our work and everything. So, uh, what are some of the modifications that uh, you are uh, implying with regard to your design process or, uh, you know, uh, some efficiency in assisting your clients, etc.? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, fortunately, we did not experience strong damages to our design and productive process during quarantine. Right. But I could say, uh, on the contrary, that the forced physical distance and division has led us to a major individual concentration on things and made us understand, first of all, the productive potential everyone has when precisely focused and far from common distractions, I would say. Okay? For instance, we set a rule for which smartphones could not be used in, a pre in precise moments of the day. Okay? So to be fully dedicated to the ongoing activities on that, on that same, same moment, on those same moments. Okay? So obviously, this was, a, this was a pact of loyalty between us because nobody could directly control anyone else. But the result of that um, of this was really, really, really significant so that we experienced a strong increasing in design outputs and quality of ideas emerging during these blackout moments, we could, we could call them. Okay? So that was stunning, absolutely stunning. This was absolutely funny, but at the same time, very serious thing to discover. Okay, so thinking outside the box can also mean learn from the mistakes the status quo indicates as a value, okay? such as always being connected without any pause, without any rest. I think this is bullshit. Again, okay, this is bullshit yes. again. And I want to think outside the box, just wanting silence and private concentration, okay? So working slow, and when I decide it, it is the best moment to do that. Okay, not when you want me to do that, but when I want to do that. So I want to think outside the box, saying that the best things come when you're not exactly under the pressure to do them. So uh, let me decide on, on, on when, where, and who. So the pandemic taught me we can still count on uh, natural instinct and on a slower way to work because, you know, brain is as fast as, 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 as lighting, but at the same time, doesn't like multitasking. <laughs> Absolutely. So I learned to recognize the danger to, of, of, of the burnout syndrome, I could say, and now I'm ready to win by going slow. <laughs> Please be sure of that. Never again, 17 or 18 hours per day, but going slow. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to burn yourself out. Uh, on a parting note, uh, while wrapping up this conversation, which has been very amazing and very inspiring, and uh, I hope all my uh, audience and everybody who's attending Collab Cloud uh, uh, would resonate with what you said today. Uh, I would like you to leave us all with a message, uh, you know, for the future. Okay. Well, the message for the future for the future is about optimism. Okay. We don't have uh, to feel down. We don't have to feel discouraged because we must build a bright future uh, towards. Okay. So we must work together again to build a bright future because we can do that and don't let anyone tell us we cannot because we can and we will do it okay thank you very much again for your invitation thank you Colin, cloud and peace to all of the audience out there <laughs>